Hi and welcome. I'm one of Dotnetos. My name is Szymon Kulec and I use Skulec as a nickname for all my online activities. In this video, I'd like to cover various improvements that were applied to both cancellation token and cancellation token source in .NET 5 and beyond. I need to warn you, this presentation will include no dummy boring slides. It will be focused and based solely on snippets of code and we will walk through them together to understand what are the improvements in .NET 5 and beyond for cancellations. At the very beginning, I'd like to mention that if you are interested in .NET and especially in asynchronous programming in .NET, either it's tasks, value tasks, concurrent queue, I invite you strongly to join the Async Expert online course. It covers all the aspects of asynchronous programming in .NET and so far provided the value for several hundred attendees. Click on the link below this video and join it to become an async expert. Let's start with a short introduction and just reminding ourselves what the cancellation token and the cancellation token source are. The cancellation token is a really simple structure. It's something that can be cancelled by its source owner. By being cancelled, you can think of it as being checked or marked as cancelled. There is a flag within this cancellation token that basically marks it as cancelled. We can construct cancellation token on its own, but if you want to manage its internal state, you need to do it by providing and building the cancellation token source first. As you can see in line 19, this cancellation token source implements iDisposable. Once you don't need it, you need to dispose it. So we have this cancellation token source and you can obtain a cancellation token out of it. It's worth to mention that cancellation tokens and cancellation token sourcers allow us to use this cooperative mode for cancellations, meaning that they are passed down all the calls and whenever the owner of the cancellation token source wants to cancel it, it is just cancelled and then all the tokens and the tokens retrieved from the cancellation token source are marked as cancelled as well. To cancel the cancellation token source and all the related cancellation tokens, you need to call the cancellation token source dot cancel. It marks the source and all the tokens as cancelled. As mentioned before, the token can be obtained using the token property. So whenever you have this cancellation token source and you want to pass the token somewhere, you can get it by accessing the token property. I briefly mentioned the cooperative mode where you basically check whether something was cancelled. Cancellation token sources and cancellation tokens allow also the registration for a specific delegate to be registered as something that should be called whenever the cancellation happens. So you can use a delegate, register it in a cancellation token so that it will be called, the delegate I mean, whenever the cancellation happens. Again, as usual in the new versions of .NET, we can use a non-allocating version, meaning that if your delegate requires some state, there is an override that allows you to pass the delegate on its own and then to pass the state as the last parameter. If you use this approach, then the state is not captured in a closure and you can write the code that is much less allocated. So this is it, this is the short intro. We know that we have cancellation token that can be obtained from the cancellation token source. We know that we can cancel tokens using the cancellation token source.cancel and also that we can register specific delegate to be called whenever the underlying cancellation token is cancelled. Let's move to some usual use cases of the cancellation token and the cancellation token source. One of the most common paradigms in using the cancellation token is just a regular token pass through. We have a method that accepts a cancellation token and whenever we have an asynchronous method that we want to call, we are supposed to pass the cancellation token. 
This probably covers 99% or even more of all the asynchronous calls that pass the cancellation token. We obtain it and then whenever any method is called within, we pass the cancellation token as the last parameter. Speaking of the last parameter, that's the usual way how you define asynchronous method, meaning that they will accept different parameters. And the last one, it will be the cancellation token that allows canceling the ongoing operation. There are cases though, when a single cancellation token is not enough. Imagine that you receive the cancellation token from a method parameter, but there is also an additional cancellation token, for instance called application stop, that you need to take into consideration when passing it uh, using this pass through as a last parameter of the called method. To address this scenario, what we can do is that we can create a so called linked token source. There is a special method on the cancellation token source, it is a static method that you can call uh, to create a cancellation token token source that combines both the cancellation token and in this case the application stop cancellation token. This means that the cancellation token source that is created in such a way, it will be cancelled if either of the cancellation tokens that were passed is cancelled. This allows us to combine two or more tokens to create a cancellation token source that uh, will have its token cancelled if any of them is cancelled. Beside combining cancellation tokens into one using this create linked token source method, what you can do sometimes is that you can create a cancellation token source that is based only on a single cancellation token for one reason, because you cannot cancel cancellation token, but you can cancel cancellation token source. So first we can create the cancellation token source using this create linked token source. Then for instance, this is just an example, we can mark it as cancelled after the specific time span. This method cancel after will cancel this cancellation token source after 10 seconds. Then having this cancellation token source set up in this way, we can use the token underneath. But what we gained is the ability to cancel this token beside the cancellation of the token that was passed as the parameter. Before we dive into .NET 5 specific optimizations and beyond, we should recall what we observed so far. We know that we use this pass through for passing the cancellation token. We know that we can create a linked token source for various number of tokens so that we can combine multiple tokens into single cancellation token source. The last but not least was the fact that we were able to register delegates whenever the cancellation token is cancelled. Let's take a look how .NET 5 and beyond address these issues and help us to write more performant code. .NET 5 and .NET 6 brought a lot of performance related changes. Many of them were focused on addressing params. For instance, task.whenAll allows you to pass currently two parameters so that you don't need to allocate a specific array whenever you have only two tasks. The similar optimization was applied to the creation of the linked token source. So whenever we create the linked token source passing a single cancellation token, it won't be wrapped in this params array, uh, so it will be passed directly to the underlying method. The same works for two parameters as we described in the example before. Whenever you pass two parameters, two cancellation tokens that you want to combine in a single cancellation token source. The three and more will allocate an array. But on the other hand, how many times did they link three or more cancellation tokens? The answer is probably not that many times. So these two methods for creating linked token sources are great improvements for either performance heavy code or any framework like Codebase. The second really, really important optimization is related to handling the registrations 
of the delegates that we already discussed before. Whenever you want to register a delegate uh, for the token, that will be invoked when the token is cancelled. In .NET 5 and beyond, the registrations are handled by a component that is created lazily. The observation that .NET team made was that uh, not that many cancellation token sources and cancellation tokens have uh, delegates registered for handling their cancellation. So the whole logic related to keeping the delegates, handling the list of the delegates that are registered for the cancellation token source and the cancellation token uh, was separated into a single component that handles it and is allocated only if the specific token has something registered to it. If you don't register a delegate, it will be just null and it won't allocate a thing. The very last optimization that I want to discuss is related to resetting the cancellation token source. There are cases when you create a cancellation token source instance and then pass the token to some method. Because the token provides these registrations that uh, the, the, the method can use for registering delegates for the specific token, you can't easily reuse it because otherwise, if you reuse this cancellation token source for another purpose, it would still have these registrations attached to the underlying cancellation token source. To address that, uh, the try reset method was added. So the purpose of it is that we have a cancellation token source. Its token was passed to several calls, maybe many calls, but then we know that we didn't cancel it and we want to reuse it for other purposes. What try reset will do is that it will try to remove all the registrations so the cancellation token source is like brand new and then you can use it and use its token to call other methods. It's important to mention that this try reset it's not something that I encourage you to use on daily basis. It's something that you can use whenever you have a cancellation token source and you write either a library or a framework and you don't want to allocate that much of cancellation token sources. Then once you are done with one piece of computation or one chunk of calls and you want to reset it and reuse it for other purpose, that's where you should apply it. On daily basis, please use the cancellation token source just like that and do not try to juggle it with the try reset method. If you want to learn more about asynchronous programming in .NET, I strongly encourage you to visiting asyncexpert.com and joining our online course. We provided a lot of, a lot of materials and it's spicy 